Okay, boys and girls, it's Saturday morning for me, and uh, I'm sitting at my kitchen table, and so if you hear noise in the background, it's my family making breakfast. But our objective this morning is to find the area between two curves. Um, this takes us to the applications of integration. Now, finding the area between two curves is relatively simple. You just subtract the two curves and integrate from A to B. In this particular situation, if you notice, one curve is always on top of the other. And so when we have the situation where one curve is always on top of the other, we're going to integrate with respect to x. And these are going to be x values. These are the points of intersection. And they're going to be x values. Okay? So in this case, a would be 0 and B would be 1. So we would integrate from 0 to 1. And it would be the curve on top, in this case, the square root of X minus the curve on bottom, Y equals X squared. So it's top minus bottom, unless one curve is to the, always to the right or always to the left of the other. In this case, since one curve is not on top of the other, we have to do right curve minus right left curve. And in this case, when we do this, we have to differentiate with respect to y. So what I want you to see on this, these would be y values. So whatever this y value is from this y value. So these would be y values that I would look for. If you notice, it says on here C and D. But these would now be y values, and we take the, respect, the integral with respect to y. So therefore, we need to solve for y in this. So instead of having y equals, we'll have x is equal to as we write our equation. Okay? So if one is to the right, always to the right, always to the left of the other, we have to do right curve minus left curve. If one is always on top and bottom, we do um, top minus bottom. Let's do a simple example. This first one is to find the area under the curve of x squared minus 1. Now, you need to be able to graph simple functions, such as x squared minus 1. We know it's quadratic. We know that it has a vertex at negative 1. We know that it opens upward, so it looks sort of like this. So really what we're finding, is we're finding the difference between the curve and the x-axis. So we're finding this distance, or this area. We're finding the area under that curve. Now, in order to do that, we have to find the points of intersection. And I didn't draw this the best, but the points of intersection for this would be here and here. And I think it would be at 1. I didn't draw that. And if we wanted to see that, we can always just set it equal to um, each other. So I could do x squared minus 1, and the x-axis is represented by 0. So I get x. Uh, is equal to plus or minus 1. So those would be my limits of integration. So I'm simply going to integrate from negative 1 to 1, and it's going to be x squared. The x-axis is on top, so it's going to be 0 minus x squared minus 1. And the reason I put 0 first because it's top curve, and this curve is represented by y equals 0. That's the x-axis is represented by y equals 0. So it's top curve minus bottom curve. Now, using symmetry, I could do this differently. I could also integrate from 0 to 1 and multiply the entire thing by 2. Now, remember I, I told you previously that the AP exam loves symmetry. So they may list it like this. If it were a multiple choice test, they may put the two on the outside and ask you which one matches. Okay, so now we're just back to uh, what we did before. So we're going to take out that negative, integrate from 0 to 1 of x squared minus 1 dx dx dx. And that gives us uh, negative 2 times uh, x cubed over 3 minus x. And we're integrating from 0 to 1. 
So that gives me one third minus one. Notice by going from zero to one, that made my life a little easier because now I don't have to evaluate negative one because at zero, this whole thing is zero. So one third minus negative one is negative two thirds. So I have negative two times negative two thirds, which is four thirds. And that's my answer. Okay? Let's do another example. Now, going forth, I have used a program called Desmos, uh, desmos.com if you want to go there, to graph these. But like for a problem like this, you would need to graph it yourself. You need to know what this looks like. I was just being lazy. Also from this graph, we can see the points of intersection. But if I didn't have these points of intersection, how could I find them? Well, one of two ways. One, if I had a calculator, I could set them equal to each other and find intersections. Or I could just do it the old-fashioned way and set them equal to each other. So that gives me x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0. So that's x plus 2, x minus 1. So x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to 1. So we can see that from the graph that this point of intersection is negative 2, one, 2, 3, although we don't need the y value for this one. In some problems we do. And here x is 1 and 0. Okay? So which curve is on this? y equals negative x plus 1 is always on top of the parabola. So because this is always on top, I'm going to use top minus bottom. My limits of integration, I'm going to integrate x values from negative 2 to 1. And uh, the linear function is on top, so that's going to be negative x plus 1 minus x squared minus 1. Uh, we can combine like terms. We get the integral from negative 2 to 1 is negative x squared minus x plus 2. And then from there, we can integrate. Now, you can integrate on your calculator. So a lot of this, I'm just going to set it up. That's the important part. And then you can just integrate on your calculator. But I'll do this one for you. We get negative 1 third x cubed minus x squared over 2 plus 2x. Two and then we're integrating that from negative 2 to 1. Now you can always already see that with the fractions and everything, this is going to become tedious. So I'm going to let you finish that on your own. Let's do one more problem and in your notes. Okay, so we are admitting problem number, I think this is problem 3 in your notes. Just omit that one. Okay, this is an interesting problem because it doesn't look like when I graph this, again, I use decimals to graph it, um, I have x squared plus 2, so I have a vertex of 0, 2, and y equals negative x is the linear function, but they don't intersect. But I am told that I am integrating from x equals 0 to x equals 1. I think these are in 1. And so we can see this is the area that we're integrating, that we're trying to find. We're trying to find this area. So since they gave us our limits, we don't need to set them equal to each other because we see that they're never, never equal. So I can integrate from 0 to 1. Now which one's on top? The quadratic's on top, and negative x is on the bottom. So that gives us the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared plus x plus 2. So again, integrating that, I get 1 third x cubed plus x squared over 2 plus 2x. Two and I'm integrating from 0 to 1. I'll try that one since I'm integrating to 0. I have to subtract them. And that's going to be 1 third plus 1 half plus 2. And you know you can leave your answer like that unless you have a calculator and you just figure out what it is on the calculator. All right, those are examples one, two, and three. Please watch the next video, which will include the next example.